Book of Genesis, chapter 8. The flood subsides. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth, and the water subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of 150 days, the water had abated. And in the seventh month, of the, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Ararat? I, I don't know how to say that. And the waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made, and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him in the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth, so he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth a dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth, and he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. God's covenant with Noah. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remain, remains, seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So, in this chapter we see, uh, we see God's mercy. In the past few chapters we got to see God's wrath, now we get to see God's mercy. We see that because of what Noah has done, God has made a covenant with him that as long as the earth remains, Nothing will cease. As long as earth remains, God will not destroy life as he had done during this flood. And it says here something that I think is quite interesting. I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. So, I believe this is God acknowledging that Man's heart is evil. Man's heart is set on evil intentions. And that's like a very important thing for us to also realize that before Christ was born and before we were brought into salvation, we were evil. We were evil in heart. So it's important for us to see God's mercy acting out in this chapter of Genesis. We get to see that as time and time goes on, the flood, the flooded earth, the waters start to subside. And we get to see that it takes time for God's mercy. It takes time for God to change the earth in the way that he had done.
I mean, you have to see here also that Noah built an altar to the Lord and brought every some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelt the offer and the pleasing aroma, he said that he would never curse the ground again. So, it is through our offering of love, our offering to the Lord, that his mercy really comes in. I mean, hmm. See, that's going against, like, other thoughts I've had. Like, I, I thought that there was nothing that we could really do to gain the Lord's mercy since he gave us, like, himself before like any of us were actually redeemed like we didn't earn God's mercy he gave it to us freely hmm. I know like this is Old Testament stuff so it does get like a bit confusing and you know I'm still an inexperienced Christian so seeing like being able to read the Bible in like the spiritual way I've done it before but you know doing it on command isn't really something that I can properly do yet but I know, like, hopefully someone else who has read this chapter in, like, that spiritual way can give us some of their knowledge. Because, again, my knowledge is flawed. So, essentially the way that I do see Genesis chapter 8, though, is it is a show of God's mercy. Whereas Genesis chapter 7 was a show of God's wrath. So it shows that God is able to punish, but he is also able to forgive. He is capable of both. And we need to not forget that. And we need to always remember to long for God's mercy, to long for God's forgiveness. Because if we don't, and we don't seek that grace, then we will be punished by God. And especially once, like, we get to Revelations again, like, this is all, like, I'll be able to come back to Genesis after Revelations, and I'll be able to, like, point out a few more things. Again, I haven't read Revelations yet, but I'm assuming that we'll be able to loop around again, and we'll be able to get a new meaning for pretty much everything. Like, once we read through the whole Bible and loop back around, we'll be able to go through it with, like, a different perspective on it, and that's what I'm sort of hoping for. But yeah, so, I suppose that's everything I have to say today, uh... Keep running when everyone, keep running when everyone else is, <laughs> keep running when no one else is and have a blessed day.